How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be checking out a video called 10 reasons why you should never move to the United States. So I've been doing a lot of videos that kind of compare like United States to uh, Europe, stuff like that. I did a lot of, uh, you know, just general re reactions, to different countries, um, mostly Netherlands, stuff like that. So I saw this one. It's fitting. Um, definitely wanted to check it out. 10 reasons why you should never move to the United States. So a lot of the stuff I have been checking out has been uh, opening up my eyes about the infrastructure, lack of infrastructure sometimes, you know, uh, in the in the United States and everything. It's not so developed as what we think here or what they tell us here. So um, yeah, 10 reasons why you should never move here. So let's check it out. Um, as always, the links to the original Video will be in the description section down below. The original channel is called Nick Johnson, so shout out to him. Go check it out. Hit like on the original video after you watch this one. Or go hit like and then come back and watch this one. Watch this too. It's all good. So hit play. USA! Check it out. USA! 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 We are number 28 and dropping. <laughs> a nonprofit called the Social Progress Index recently came out with another ranking on world progress. And guess what? Three countries actually dropped when it came to overall progression Hungary, Brazil, and us. And the other two dropped hey. less than we did, which means we're doing worse over the last decade than every other country in the world, people. Is that a surprise, though? Really? Maybe not when you look around. And we're doing a lot worse in the last decade than every other country. That is terrible. See the challenges we have in our country today. Our kids are struggling. Our adults are overweight and drugged out. There's a political divide we haven't seen in a long time. And uh -huh. meanwhile, we're distracted by our phones and reality TV. The data points to an alarming picture of the state of our nation, said one really smart person. It's like we're a developing country, and that is just sad. Yeah, that is sad, and that's... uh it's a lot different than what you think, like growing up here in America, what they teach you and everything else, you know, the idea of the American dream and all this kind of stuff. It's definitely, definitely a bit shattered. <laughs> Despite our enormous wealth, military power and cultural influence, we're coming up in last place. We're like the entitled rich kid who keeps failing in class. Today, we're gonna look at the world rankings and talk about things that we do right that spend most of our time talking about the things that we do wrong because we have some issues big time in America. But that's no surprise, right? We're not the same America. <laughs> We're not the same America. We're not the same America. We're not the same America. I wonder no if that's way. an original song. So before we get into the metrics, talk about how depressing things are here, we should go. Okay, so we got Norway coming in first, Denmark second, great, Finland third, awesome. Um, let's see, Netherlands 10th, Germany 11th, nice. Canada 7th, decent. Whoops, the wrong button. Over the final results of all big developed nations, Norway came out on top, yeah. followed by Denmark, Finland, and New Zealand. Many African nations came out on the bottom. We ranked 28th after having slipped from 11th a decade ago. We now. So. Wow. There's a lot of countries that's doing better than America. Huh? Czechia, Estonia, Slovenia. Rank behind significantly poorer countries like Estonia, Cyprus, Greece, and the Czech Republic. But we dropped Crazy. more than anyone else. If this were to continue, the U.S. would be on par with those African nations one day. Now, this isn't going to be very fun, but let's just rip off the Band-Aid and get started with this stuff. On breakfast, Jack, and hurry. One big Never ate at a Jack in the Box. I think it's always, I think it's only LA Cut West. The reason for our poor showing in our world rankings is our health and nutrition. As a nation, we lead the world in medical technology, but we're 97th in access to healthcare. We have health oh, wow. statistics similar to people in Chile, Albania, and Jordan. If you compare the U.S. to the world's 11th richest nations, the U.S. spends far more on healthcare, but the outcomes are last. 
That means access to health care, efficiency of our medical system, and equity across different income groups is terrible. The Affordable terrible. Care Act in 2010 was supposed to provide relief in terms of cost and access, but sadly, it's been statistically proven that countries with nationalized medical systems outperform us on all health care measures. Plus, a lot of us are overweight, but we know that already. We rank 11th in the world in terms of obesity rates and first among all developed nations, unless you count Kuwait. When you look at mental Kuwait. health, we're... Kuwait? Well, anyways, first of all, I am not obese, definitely. But what's he mean by Kuwait? Let's see. We rank 11th in the world in terms of obesity rates and first among all developed nations, unless you count Kuwait. So we, okay. When you look at mental health, we're winners again. And by that, I mean losers. The World Health Organization says we have the third highest depression rates in the world after China and India. So if Kuwait was, wouldn't we just be second then? He said, unless you count Kuwait, why wouldn't we just come in second? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I got confused on that. But yeah. Third highest rate of depression after China and in, in I can't even talk China and India. That is uh, that's terrible. That is terrible. The share of Americans who report that every day is a bad mental health day has doubled over the last 25 years. Rising distress days. and despair are a largely American phenomenon, not observed in other advanced countries. And since the pandemic, our depression rates have tripled. In terms of suicide rates, the U.S. isn't crazy high. We rank 34th in the world for suicide rates per capita, but it's going up fast, pal. Our nation's Sucks. suicide rates are up 30% since the year 2000 and up 50% among girls and women. And you Damn. can bet social media has a lot to do with that. Yeah, that's crazy. And as far as the depression, uh, I, I definitely suffer from that um, from time to time, for sure. I didn't realize that it was worse here than other countries, though, but I can see why, so... You know, all the stuff that I'm learning about, definitely, I can see why. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> I remember those commercials. Any questions? 90s. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. We're a country of stimulants, we are. Drug, alcohol, and prescription medication use is climbing. We've been in an endless yeah. war on drugs, but as a country, we consume more than 5% of all illegal drugs in the world. Just our country alone. And drug use is up in this nation by more than 8% over the last 20 years. An estimated... I mean, there's a lot of people here, though, too. I mean, for 5%, I mean, you figure... What is there, like 197 countries... So I, I don't know. Drug use is up in this nation by more than 8% over the last 20 years. An estimated one in 10 kids in the USA lives with a parent who has an alcohol problem. Alcohol use is only up a teeny bit. So at least there's that. And the good news is that with teens, it's down a lot. Kids these days don't drink and smoke and experiment like they did when we were kids. Yay, kids. But <laughs> prescription drug use is up since 2000. Overdose numbers are skyrocketing, especially when you look at synthetic drugs. And total yearly deaths from all of this is more than doubled in the last Damn. 20 years. Yeah. McGruff here. See that guy? He's stealing. It's not good, guys. Don't be, don't, don't move here. Just stay in Europe. <laughs> and that bike. Now, see that lady? Bike. She's calling the cops. Mimi Marth. Right. Part of the Eyes and Ears Patrol in Hartford, right. Connecticut. What in the world kind of phone? Did... <laughs> what is this, the 70s? That is, that is massive. Cops, Mimi Marth, part of the Eyes and Ears Patrol in Hartford, Connecticut. Take a bite out of crime. Now, what about crime? crime? Well, when you measure violent and property crime, we're about middle of the road, but a majority of countries have a lower homicide rate than we do. But crime and safety has been a real concern in 2020, as large cities have been overrun with a spike in shootings and vandalism. Shrinking yeah. police budgets have only made the problem worse. We lead the world in percentage of people locked up, and we spend by far the most on keeping people behind bars. More than 2 yeah, million Americans are in prison alone, and that's not even in jails. So basically, the entire population of New Mexico is in prison, at least comparatively. Jeez. 
Of course, we have a ton of jerks who do deserve to be in jail, but are we doing something wrong? A lot of other countries are educated. Those tattoos can't be real. It's not. You can literally see the sleeve thing right here. Wow. Yeah, that's one of those, like, uh, arm covering, like, pantyhose things. You can see the edge of it. That's crazy. The jerks who do deserve to be in jail, but are we doing something wrong? A lot of other countries are educating, counseling, and treating our criminals' addictions and helping them transition into the job sector. Not us. Our nation's nope. crime has dropped a lot over the last 30 years. That's right. And so is crime around the world. Why is that, Mappy? One study says because the world's population is getting older. Huh. Well, that makes sense, Mappy. Huh. You get an A. Older people are less likely to commit crimes. True. At least for the most part. I for president, I for president, I for president, I for president. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the I the drum. We'll take Ike to Washington. On the freedom metric, we lag in sharing political power among all citizens. We rank a shameful 100th in the world when it comes to discrimination against minorities. Jeez. While anyone is capable of reaching the American dream, and clearly anyone can rise to power within our political system, it's still skewed towards one demographic. That's crazy, 100th. That's terrible. Our First Amendment rights are being taken away now too. If you say the wrong thing on social media, you'll get ostracized or fired yep. from your job or even assaulted. Cancel culture is taking over America right now. And politicians can take away our rights with one stroke of a pen. And they're <laughs> that girl doing the sign language though. America right now. And politicians can take away our rights with one stroke of a pen. And they're doing that right now. Some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. Oh, that's terrible. People start pollution. People can stop it. That is a crazy commercial. I've never seen that in my life. That is funny. We should probably get a big fat C when it comes to our environmental score. We rank first in greenhouse gas emissions. We only have the world's 40th best water supply. But in terms of overall pollution, when you measure chemicals in our water, the contamination in our soil, and particulate matter UGM3, whatever that means, we're super good, like almost at the bottom. Yay us. Okay, cool. I'm a volunteer for the environment. I'm going to clean up some trash one day. Wait, you are a volunteer or you're going to be a volunteer? Oh, I have a good soul. I don't think you <laughs> can say that about yourself, Karen. I think other people need to say that about you. So weird. She's crazy. <laughs> Education-wise, it's all over the place. We rank number one in the world for quality of our universities, but we rank 91st in the world when it comes to access to quality basic education. Our kids get okay. an education roughly similar to what kids in Uzbekistan and Mongolia get. And that's... Wow, that's pretty sad. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, we have great uh, universities, but, like, good luck getting into one or affording one. You know what I mean? It's not good. How do our kids compare to the kids across the world? About average. In reading, we're 11th in the world, and in science, we're close to that. But our math scores are middle of the road. Latvian and Czech Republic kids are smarter in math than we are. But Good job, China. Like, they're killing it up there, huh? Nice. But you can't blame our schools as much as you can our family structure. Research has shown that 60% of school success is determined by an American kid's upbringing. Bad family structure, poor living conditions, and rough okay. neighborhoods matter six times more than the quality of the teacher or the school itself. Well, we that. know it's not our household incomes holding our kids back. After all, we're the sixth wealthiest overall when it comes to average household wealth. So it has to be our family values which are the main cause for our school failures. One big thing stands out here, family structure. The media has a lot to do with it. It's estimated that 2% of U.S. kids have a parent in prison, which is crazy high. That's like one in 50 kids. Two parent families have been proven to have a significant impact on a kid's success. Here in America, we have a high level of early marriage couples. And in a majority of U.S. states, kids can still get married before the age of 18. The divorce rate among U.S. households is going down over time, but we still rank fifth in the world for divorce rates at about 46%. 
what is going on with Luxembourg over there? Why they? Wow, eighty-seven percent of people in Luxembourg get divorced. That's crazy to me. Why? Well, Americans can legally marry so young these days, and divorces are much easier to navigate through now. And the social stigma of a divorce in the U.S. no longer exists. And parents are distracted by trying to get ahead, by trying to please others, and by. I wouldn't say it doesn't exist. It's just less than it used to be, for sure. And parents are distracted by trying to get ahead, by trying to please others, and by social media and TV. Yo. We have, apparently, the highest rate of kids living in single-parent households of all other nations. Almost a quarter of U.S. Dang. kids... Did you say the highest? The highest. Wow. Yeah. I believe it. I mean, that's... I mean, that was me growing up. Single parent households of all other nations. Almost a quarter of That's U.S. Crazy. kids under the age of 18 live with one parent and no other adult, which is three times higher than the world average. So maybe the eroding American yeah. family structure is setting up our kids for failure. Chasing the American dream puts undue stress on Americans. We work way too many hours. One in 10 Americans works more than 50 hours a week. It's because of the system. Like literally the system itself is broken which is the 10th highest rate in the world. And our system of support for working parents is weak. Companies in yeah. a lot of other countries give far more paid leave for new parents and much more vacation time and sick time than we do. And then there's this. Both parents work full-time in nearly half of all U.S. households. And that's yep. up from 31% in 1970. And those are only the households where there are two parents at home. And still, yeah. nearly a third of kids in our country live in poverty, people. If you're not out there sitting in traffic trying to get ahead in America, there's a decent chance you're also struggling or homeless. Homelessness in our country is going down for the most part, although in some of our major cities it's skyrocketing in places like New York, LA, Seattle, and Portland. More than half a million Americans sleep without shelter each night. All of this. Yeah, that's really crazy. That's, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of homeless around. Not necessarily in like the little town I live in, but like bigger cities for sure. Portland. More than half a million Americans sleep without shelter each night. All of this, all of the problems that we've talked about so far, it's been going on forever. They predate our current administration and have grown under the leadership of both parties. Yeah, it's been it's just been getting worse and worse and worse and worse until we're probably going to end up hitting like a uh, like a tipping point at some point. Of course, we're trying to fix things all the time. Kids are being asked to exercise more in school, and laws are passed banning certain foods. There's a war on drugs, like we said earlier. Schools are constantly tweaking things to improve scores and involvement. New homeless programs are developed to try to help house people and transition them more effectively. And new laws hit the books to regulate emissions and pollution. But are we succeeding? I mean, maybe the problem isn't the laws and programs and initiatives. What if the problem is us? You can't change laws and make changes the way a country runs and expect change unless the people change with it. And you That's very true. You can't change people unless they want to change people. Maybe the reason yeah. we're falling behind other nations isn't the way we run our country. Maybe it's the people in it, the way we act and behave and the choices we make. But the way we act and behave is directly like influenced by the way that we're running the country and society and, and, and the media in general, right? So, yeah. Face it, the American society is kind of broken right now. Well, yeah. Now, earlier That's... I did an optimistic video where I called America the best country on earth, but that was mostly just nationalistic pandering. Look, I fly the flag high and proud uh, myself, but facts are facts. We have a lot of things that we're doing wrong. I mean, sure. I got the Dutch flag over here. I don't even have an American flag. Myself, but facts are facts. We have a lot of things that we're doing wrong. I mean, sure, we're rich and we're proud, but are we nice to each other? Are we complacent? No. Do we even give a crap anymore? Nobody I mean, does here. Have Americans thrown in the towel? And don't be so sad. Smile. We're going to be okay. Probably. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We're kind of bad. It's kind of sad. 
It's like we know we're different and we don't give a shit. From LA <laughs> to Northern Maine, uh, that's we're funny. not the same America. Cause it seems we've lost our way. We're not the same America. That's awesome, guys. Now there's no one left to blame. It like. We're not the same America. This is good. Will we be back one day? We're not the same America. 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 Reminds no me way. Like, old, uh, like a sitcom. Come on, guys. We can do better than this. Hey. We're all to blame, but let's get back to being number one again, huh? I think we can do it. Hey guys, if you like- <laughs> I don't know about all that, guys. Was we ever number one? Number was it was just like a false illusion, right? So anyways, um, hit like, hit subscribe. Have a super fun, awesome day. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. All right, later.